Welcome back to the program, everyone. My name is Dr. Dan, and I'm a pharmacist turned weight management specialist. Today, we're going to be talking about the pain in the ass that is pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer, in particular in the context of some of these anti-obesity medications, especially the GLP-1 receptor agonists such as Saxenda, Ozempic, and Wagovi. But before we jump into things, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss another one of my videos. So what exactly is pancreatitis? Well, the pancreas is an organ within our body and itis means inflammation. So it means an inflammation of the pancreas. It's kind of like the inflammation that you experience when you roll your ankle on a flat surface. Not only is your ankle sore and inflamed, but so is your ego. And hopefully pancreatic cancer is a little bit more self-explanatory. Obviously it involves the pancreas and it is a cancer of the pancreas. Now here's a little diagram right here. This kind of shows you where the pancreas itself is in the body to give you a little bit more context, if you will. See, it's that little organ right there. It generally is depicted as yellow and I'm pretty sure in real life it actually is the color yellow, not just in the textbook, but it is an upside down Nike type symbol looking organ and it sits behind our stomach. Now, if you've ever had pancreatitis, you are gonna be very familiar that it is an unpleasant and quite a painful experience. If you did have it, you were likely in the hospital for a short period of time, doubled over in abdominal pain with a team of care providers surrounding you that really couldn't offer you much outside of supportive care and hopefully a few shots of morphine in order to dull down the pain. As for pancreatic cancer, you've probably heard of it as well. And unfortunately, pancreatic cancer tends to have a relatively poor diagnosis for a vast majority of the individuals that end up having it. And this isn't at least compared to other types of cancers out there. And the reason being is that this kind of cancer tends to progress relatively quickly and it really isn't caught usually until it reaches later stages and at this point it is often spread to other organs in the body. So for being such a small little organ, it obviously can cause a lot of grief, but it's able to keep things in check for us in terms of managing our blood sugars as well as ensuring our digestive processes are operating optimally. So it's, it's pretty important. But to the meat of the matter, why am I so focused on this awkward little organ? Well, as I said above, there might be a linkage between pancreatitis, pancreatic cancer, and anti-obesity medications, in particular, the GLP-1 receptor agonists, such as Trulicity, Saxenda, Ozempic, Wagovi, Biridon, Biridin, and the new one that soon to be coming out, Wagovi. So to give you a bit more context and background here, what we know with pancreatitis is that it's chronic pancreatitis. So it chronic inflammation of the pancreas, so it's continuously happening over and over again, is what ultimately leads to pancreatic cancer potentially developing, or at least it significantly increases the risk. And it's not entirely clear if you have just one episode of acute pancreatitis, so it's immediate, it's happening right now, and then once we remove the offending agent, the pancreatitis resolves, whether this single episode can lead to pancreatic cancer or not. Now, the pancreatitis that's often associated with the GLP-1 receptor agonist medications is in this acute state. It happens the one single time you develop it. If you're on that GLP-1 receptor agonist, usually that medication is then removed and your chance of having pancreatitis or your pancreatitis essentially goes away and you don't have it again. So you're not getting that chronic aspect of it. So is there a linkage then between the pancreatitis, the GLP-1 receptor agonist, and then the development of pancreatic cancer? It's really a big question mark, but based on what we know, it seems unlikely. And there's lots of other things that can potentially lead to chronic pancreatitis, such as your genetics, alcohol use, elevated triglyceride levels, so that's kind of a, a cholesterol or a lipid level in your body, as well as other potential medications. Now, to make things even more confusing, there's a couple other things that we need to keep in mind. Individuals that have obesity and type 2 diabetes, which are also likely going to be the individuals that are using the GLP-1 receptor agonist, are already at a higher level of developing pancreatitis all on their own because of their associated conditions. So suddenly we add in the GLP-1 receptor agonist and we get a bit of a confounding or kind of a mixing of the results. Was it because of their medical conditions or was it because of the actual GLP-1 receptor agonist? And number two, when we further look at other trials involving GLP-1 receptor agonists, such as Ozempic, what we see is that the GLP-1 receptor agonist might actually be protective and prevent or reduce your risk of developing pancreatic cancer. So what the fuck, right? It gets very confusing. Do these medications lead to pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer? 
what exactly is going on here? Is it other conditions? Is it other things? Is there just so many things going on that we really don't know? In reality, it is definitely the latter at the moment. Now, this is definitely going to sound like a bit of a lame answer, but we fundamentally need more research in order to understand if there is a true risk or if there is a true benefit or not with the GLP-1 receptor agonist in the context of pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer. However, the silver lining to all of this is that the reason why the evidence is so inconclusive is largely because the events or the number of times that pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer are occurring with these medications and in these trials is at such a low rate that it's difficult to really ascertain what exactly is going on here. So that really tells us that even if there is a potential risk, it is a very, very low risk because it happens at such a low rate that we really can't detect or do the proper statistical analysis to give you a conclusive answer or not. And in my opinion, and based on my appraisal of the literature, I would say the risk of pancreatic cancer is essentially 0% at this point. Maybe not the case with pancreatitis. It may lead to that and lead to an acute episode, but definitely when it comes to pancreatic cancer, I think more of that chronic aspect of things needs to be in place, and that's what needs to occur. Now, by no means can we ignore this literature or this data. We can't just blow it off and say that's not the case. We still need to keep it in mind and be thinking about it. So if you do have a history of pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer, it is going to be something that we want to think about. However, if these events do occur while you're on a GLP-1 receptor agonist, it's kind of like you won the pancreas lottery, if you will. And even if it did occur again, we would still need to rule out other potential causes or variables that might be present that could have led to the development of the pancreatitis and or pancreatic cancer. So I hope this has provided you some insight in terms of pancreatitis, pancreatic cancer around the GLP-1 receptor agonist. Overall, the risk is really, really quite low and there's still a lot of unanswered questions similar to a lot of the stuff that I talk about. It's a little bit of up in the air and really more research is needed. Of course, as always, if there's any questions, further commentary, you name it, drop it in the comments below, shoot me an email, or connect with me on my other social media channels, at the official Dr. Dan is the handle, and let me know your thoughts, and I would be happy to answer your questions there, or even do a follow-up video if you need further information. But until next time, my friends, always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks, and of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss another episode, and we'll talk to you soon.